Good morning. I wanted to thank uh, Guy and Lift and Access uh, for giving us the opportunity to come in here and uh, thank everybody for showing up, participating. Uh, if you haven't met me by now, my name is Alan Dotz and I work for Toyota Material Handling and um, we're the exclusive distributors in North America for the Aichi products. So what we're showing today is our SV3246C, our 30-foot uh, platform. We're going to start off from the back side and uh, do a complete walk around on the features and the benefits of the machine. So on the back side, we're going to start off with the lower controls. Our lower controls are mounted on the back and they're recessed inside so that they uh, help prevent against damage on the job site. And uh, to go over the controls that we have briefly, we've got the uh, emergency power off switch, the function switch to actually make it go up and down. We have a uh, safety enable switch so that the operator has to have two hands on the machine when he's actually operating the machine from the ground controls. This is actually a dual function switch in that when you raise it up, it's your safety enable, and when you push it down, it tests the level sensor on the machine. So when uh, the operator does his pre-inspection walk around, he can use this switch, and then instead of putting his hand and actually physically having to touch the level sensor, this will test the level sensor for him. The level sensor being the only sensor on this machine. And I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. This indicator here is the uh, battery charger indicator. So when you plug the battery charger in, the uh, battery charger plug is right here. When you plug the battery charger in, it uh, obviously automatically cuts uh, functions for the machine. And then that light will flash green until the battery is completely charged. And then it stays green, constant green. When you uh, turn the machine on, it illuminates the hour meter. This is our digital hour meter. It is also shows the uh, state of charge of the battery. And it also has a uh, red indicator on there for the system. If there's a fault in the system, there's a red, ind red indicator light that will flash on and off. Obviously, this is our key switch, platform ground select switch. When you select the ground controls, you can only operate the machine from the ground controls and uh, platform is only platform. And then finally, this indicator here is our tilt indicator. So when the uh, machine goes beyond the specified uh, tilt angle, that will light. You'll hear an audible alarm. And um, this is also for our self-diagnostics. This unit has onboard self-diagnostics. And if there is a fault, it will flash a fault code. And I'll actually demonstrate that in a couple of minutes. We have uh, forklift pockets on the back, so that would be the primary spot where you can forklift the machine and lift it into position. We also allow the operators to fork it from the two sides without doing any damage to the pothole bars or the machine itself. There are obviously no uh, pockets on the sides, but we can fork it from the side. Our ladder is a bolt-on ladder uh, so that it can easily be removed and replaced or repaired if damaged. We use a uh, box tube and pin design and uh, inch and a half pins for our design. All the boxes are covered, both ends, to prevent debris on the job site from falling into the boxes and getting trapped or lodged or uh, sticking inside. You can see on the uh, back of our scissor section, we use roller bearings on our sliding section instead of using wear pads. And each roller bearing has got scrapers and cleaners on it on both sides. So as it goes forward and backward, it'll push any debris, screws, nails, whatever, out of the way. And it'll also clean the surface to ensure smooth rolling of the platform. I'm going to uh, raise the platform up. And so I hold my enable switch up and then hit the function switch and raise it up. So you can see um, right here is our pothole bar system. You saw as soon as I raised the machine up, the pothole bars deployed on each side. We've got a very simple pothole bar system. Basically, we've got two pads mounted with springs on the scissor section. And when those pads come down, they'll hit two levers on the And those levers are connected to the pothole bars. So I'll demonstrate that in a second. Our safety prop rod is right here. 
and there's a decal on each side so the operator clearly knows how to deploy the safety prop rod. And uh, in case of maintenance or, or for working on a machine, it's got the clamp, put it back in position there, and it holds itself in position. So as the scissors comes down, you'll see the two pads will hit the two levers on the inside, totally mechanical. And as the uh, pads make contact with the levers, you'll see the pothole bars come up. Very simple system. What I wanted to show you is two other things. Obviously, everybody's system pretty much works the same way. But if there is some debris underneath the pothole bar and the operator starts to raise the machine, it'll stop right there. Because of the safety interlock system, one pothole bar has not been deployed completely. It'll stop right there. Now you can also see the flash code system. So it's flashing seven codes, seven flashes. And if the operator or the technician were to go into the service manual, look up seven flashes, he'd be able to see that it would help him, diagnos uh, help him diagnose the proper way to repair the machine. So in this case, the operator would be elevated. He would also have that flash code on the upper controls. The only thing he'd be able to do is come down, and he'd have to come down, walk around the machine, and see uh, what's stopping him from going up. So he would come back down. Get out of the platform, find the debris that's obviously stopping him from going up. And then he can complete his work, go, go up and down. It'll automatically clear itself, the flash code being gone, the problem being gone as soon as he starts to go up. All right, going around to the right side of the machine. This is our battery tray. And uh, we've got all the batteries on this side, making it easily accessible for the operator. Because, you know, these are four lead-acid batteries, and the operator checks the water in the batteries daily and has to fill it if it's on the job site long enough. So it's a, a rollout tray. There's a latch on the left side and a latch on the inside. So just stick his hands inside and pull on the latches and roll the tray out. They're spring-loaded. So as soon as he releases the latches, they automatically go back into the locking position. So he can easily just push it in and it automatically locks. So again, just putting his hands inside pulling back and rolling it out. You can see how easy that rolls. It's on four heavy-duty steel pins with nylon rollers, two on that side and two on this side. It's a heavy-gauge steel tray, so you can imagine we've got four Trojan T105 batteries, about 60 pounds apiece, so that's 240 pounds. And um, I can easily stand on top of the machine and not worry about breaking it because it is heavy gauge steel at our heavy gauge pins and nylon bushings inside there. So 400, 500 pounds sitting inside here, no worry. You can still push it in easily and the operator is ready to go. The other thing is when the operator does open up the tray, he can easily get to all four batteries. Take the tops off, look inside and get a bottle of water or whatever close to all the cells at one time not having to go to both sides of the machine or have difficulty getting to any of the cells. Also in this tray, we have our battery charger. So the plug for the battery charger is back there. The battery charger is mounted inside here. This is a global battery charger. So we use it for all our machines throughout the world. Um, by global, I mean that the input varies anywhere from 90 volts AC to 240 volts AC all in the same battery charger. All, all we basically do is replace the cord. The cord is kind of like your, your PC cord at home. It plugs into the back of the PC. Same exact kind of cord. So in Japan or in Europe, we would just use a different cord, plug it into the back of the battery charger, run it up the front there, and it'll uh, work in any country. Another advantage to this is, in the United States, sometimes on jobs that have temporary power, you might have um, 100 volts or maybe 90 volts. It also works on 50 or 60 cycles. So when you have temporary power, it's not a problem for our battery charger. Also, the battery charger only needs to see 8 volts in order to turn on. 
So basically, when you've got a 24-volt system, 8 volts is really, really low. And in some cases, some battery chargers may not come on, some automatic battery chargers. So ours generally will come on. If, uh, if, if there's less than 8 volts, then generally you're going to have to have a technician come out and re replace the battery anyway. The last thing in the tray is our uh, battery cutout switch. And that's right here, obviously required on all uh, electric scissor lifts. So that's basically it for the battery tray. This is a, uh, this machine is equipped with fold down handrails. Actually, the standard machine has rigid handrails. Uh, and the standard machine, when it comes with rigid handrails, it would have a slide bar entry. So this has the fold down handrails. When you get the fold down handrail option, it comes with the uh, swing gate, automatically closing swing gate, and it also has the adjustable entry rail, upper entry rail. We also have four lanyard attaching points on the machine from the factory. They're actually welded part of the machine and, and integral part of the machine. Our fold down handrail system actually is very simple. We have uh, four pins. The operator would remove the upper control box from its docking position. And uh, when he wanted to fold down the handrails to drive it through a doorway, all he'd have to do is pull two pins in the front and then two pins on the side. And then fold the handrails down. So very simple, pretty quick. And um, Guy, could you flip me over up to uh, upper controls, please? If he wanted to, or if he had some reason, operate the machine from up here, he could take the control box, flip it into the drive position. If he had to drive it through a doorway that were small, uh, really small, he'd be able to just drive it from up here. Otherwise, he could also drive it from the ground control, walking, on, walking next to the machine. After he gets it through the doorway, raises it up, Push the four pins back in place, and he's ready to go. So very simple. Our pins have uh, the lanyards on them so that hopefully they can stay with the machine once he does take them uh, take them out, and then he put the control box back in place. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, rotate the machine a little bit so that we can get a little bit different angle. You can hear uh, our drive motors, our drive system, which I'm going to show you in a minute. We use an AC drive system. So if it wasn't for the loud buzzing noise of the uh, motion alarm, you could barely hear the drive motors. Okay, we'll leave it in that position. Our extension deck, we've got a 39 inch extension deck and uh, we've got a transport pin that holds it in place up here so that when you're transporting it, it doesn't accidentally fly out. Remove the transport pin. It'll slide out. We've got four big heavy-duty nylon rollers, two on the back, two on the front. The front two suspend the platform. The back two roll on the platform. And then there's skid pads on the back of the uh, extension deck. So it can lock in place in this position with the handlebars. You can pull the handlebars back, slide it back, lock it into a mid position, pull the bars back again, and it'll lock into the park position. So you can see, very easy for the, the operator to use and move back and forth. We're going to pull our control box down. One of the other features that goes along with the uh, fold down handrails, you know when the operator folds the handrails down and um, he's operating it from the ground, or let's say if he wants to load the machine from the ground, we provide an eight foot 
control box cord so that the operator can safely and easily hold on to the control box, be away from the machine so he doesn't run himself over, and then drive the machine through a doorway or up a truck, up a trailer, whatever, uh, whatever he needs to do. The control box is completely removable. So we use a uh, very high quality water resistant amphenol connector. And uh, so it is completely removable. And uh, the operator can put this in his job box, in his pickup truck, take it with him, uh, secure the machine on the job site. Our electric scissor lift line is fairly unique in a, in a couple of ways. One way is uh, with the upper control boxes, the standard machines, all the control boxes are interchangeable. So from the 15 footer to the 32 footer, they're all interchangeable. Also, all the major components are interchangeable. So the tires, the motors, the AC uh, control system, the uh, hydraulic motors uh, for lifting, it's all interchangeable, all the same parts. So kind of exclusive. A little bit about our upper controls. Uh, our upper controls are a little different than everybody else's. The first thing you'll see is this heavy duty hand guard. We put that on there so that when the operator is either docked in position, in the operating position, or if he's operating it from the ground, he's got something to have both hands on. You know, one of the um, biggest problems in the industry is either crushing or pinching hazards. And when the operator has only one hand on the joystick, controlling the joystick, he'll tend to have the other hand up on the rail or on the side of the, uh, the machine somewhere and he could be lifting or driving and pinch his hands. So in this case, we've got a heavy duty steel hand guard where the operator can hold on to, and if he wants to operate, we've got that's built into the control so that he would pull up on the enable and then push forward. So very easily, if he wanted to steer the machine, we can hold on with both hands, lift up on the enable, and drive the machine forward backward, make any function steering. So safety number one. Two is if you notice that the hand guard covers the top of the controller. So let's say if the operator were to uh, override the safety for some reason, uh, there wouldn't be any inadvertent motion of the controller. If a two by four or a pipe or something came across the top of the control box, it wouldn't break the controller off. So safety and reliability, it's basically the design of this control box. The other components on the control box are pretty much standard. This is your drive or lift enable. So you can see that this machine is very proportional. So I'll hold the controller and hit lift. And um, you can see it goes very slow or up to full speed. Gravity down, obviously. Uh, Save battery energy, and um, yes, the motion alarm is standard on all the machines, unfortunately. Can't disconnect it for a demo even. And then drive, you can see how proportional this thing is with the AC drive motors. Very quiet, very smooth, and yet 2.2 miles per hour on the, uh, the maximum drive speed. This really is the number one feature of our machine is the AC drive. Pretty much exclusive AC drive on an, on an electric scissor lift. Nobody else has that in the industry. Um, two AC motors, brushless AC motors. So basically zero maintenance motors. No brushes to change, no armature to service. Um, another advantage with the AC motors, you can see the ground clearance. We've got eight inches of ground clearance. Typically with a hydraulic drive, you've got about four, four and a half inches of ground clearance. So on a job site, that's sometimes critical. Uh, other on the front of the machine is our uh, emergency descent valve. So simply mounted on the front of the machine, the operator's up in the air and he loses power, loses battery control, whatever, needs to come down in an emergency, just pull this valve and it opens up the, the descent valve and the... Uh, mechanism will come down automatically. Moving on to the left side of the machine, this is our component tray. 
Now you saw on the other side the battery tray was easily accessible for the operator. That's what we want it to be. He's got to get inside there and ma maintain those batteries. We really don't want the operator inside here. There's nothing for the operator to service or maintain inside here to take a look at. The only thing that the operator really needs to see from this side when he does his initial inspection, walk around in the morning, is to check the hydraulic level, hydraulic fluid level. And so we've got the sight glass on the outside here. And if you were able to come up a little bit closer and look at it, you can see the level is right there. If for some reason he wasn't sure about the level, all you have to do is kind of shake the machine and you can see the oil move inside there. So basically if he can see the oil, there's enough oil, machine's safe to operate. Other than that, the electrical and hydraulic components in here are not for the operator to get to. So that's why we bolt it closed. We have two bolts on the outside here. And um, not that it's going to stop anybody, but it's going to slow them down from getting inside. So take away the two bolts, and we've got all our components right here. This machine is uh, over 5,000 pounds. So this machine, we use two Subcon units to operate the drive system. One for the left side and one for the right side. So we've got two Subcons mounted right here. And the Subcon is actually a dual function Subcon. So that when we flip it to the drive function, the joystick strokes sends a signal to the Subcon. The Subcon sends an AC signal to the drive motors. When you flip it to the lift function, the same Subcon will then change function and send a DC signal to the, to the lift motor. This is our lift motor reservoir pump assembly. It's right here. And so that's, a, again, AC drive, DC lift. So basically, we've got the components here. It's our valve assembly, our hydraulic for, for lift and steer. We've got our drive system here. And then inside this black box is just a, what we call an interface board. It takes the wires from the lower control and the wires from the upper control, puts them all in one spot so they can send one single signal for lift or drive. Again, uh, nicely packaged so that uh, it can swing out, be easily repaired or maintained, and then uh, bolted closed again. You can also see on the side of the machine with the pins, we have uh, put covers on all the uh, pinholes. This is just a, um, an added thing we put in for reliability and, and um, keeping the machine quiet, operating quietly. You know, these machines will be on jobs where they could do pressure washing or possibly sandblasting or just out in the desert in Arizona somewhere working. And through the lifetime of the machine, it's going to get some debris, some contamination inside those bearings, and it'll cause a lot of older machines. You'll hear them go up and down and creak like crazy. And some guys that are going up 30 feet in the air don't like to hear that creaking noise. So sometimes it'll get on a job site, it'll be creaking, and the guy will send it back. So the reason we put those on there is to protect any pollution, any kind of debris, just to not get inside there. You can also see on the platform, we've got cutouts all around the platform, so that when you wash the platform, pressure wash the platform, you can wash all the debris off and it won't puddle up inside. On the extension deck, it's also cut out and on the sides of the platform, all steel platform. And the final feature of this machine is our warranty. We have a standard 235 warranty. Two years complete on the machine, three years on the hydraulic system, and five years on the structure. And that's standard on all our products. That's it. Any questions? Uh, if the batteries get to a certain level, it will just, it'll start a flash, it'll stop operating, and it'll send a flash code for low, low voltage. Right. Will, will it give a warning? Uh, I mean, a warning? No, no warning, no, uh, no. Just the, uh, the flash code when it stops working. Okay. Um, why don't you run up a little bit so we can make some scissors? Okay. Tell me when.
Any questions while he's taking pictures? We have an optional proportional steering. Uh, this is toggle switch steer, standard on the machines. We also have, yes, a knob. It's uh, optional proportional steering. And what that is is it's uh, kind of like a steering wheel instead of a toggle switch. And the uh, operator would rotate it going right or left. And it's uh, proportional because if you were to rotate it slowly, the wheels would steer slowly. Uh, it's also proportional into the, as the position of the knob. So as he turns it to the right, the wheels go to the right. It's also spring return to center so that when he lets go of the steering wheel knob, it returns to center and the steering wheels actually return to center. So that the operator, if he chooses that, he will know that whenever he releases that, his steering wheels are always returned to center. The only other options that we offer would be a flashing beacon. Obviously the fold down handrails are optional. We have an optional inverter. I'm sorry? On what? Uh, yes, it's plus or minus about 45 degrees. Yes, and a height sensor. Height sensor. For uh, high speed, low speed cutout. So when does it cut out? At uh, six feet. Same level as where you saw when the uh, pothole bars stopped going. So that works together. How does that sense the height of? You say it's a sensor to sense how high. Right, there's just a, it's got, makes contact with the bar inside. Oh, there's here. a, okay. Yeah, there's mechanical. a, mechanical, yeah. Maybe it was, yeah, no, it's mechanical. It was no. <laughs> okay. so right, it rotates up and hits the mechanical switch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 700, I didn't, 700 pound capacity, 250 pounds on the extension deck. So that's, that's 750 total? 750 total, yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Bring down. Yep. Here we may as well demonstrate our emergency descent valve. Yes, it is. Uh, we allow the operator 1,000 pounds up to 25 feet, okay. uh, but it's all up to the operator. Okay. There's no control system on it for that. Thank you, everybody.